Drinking buddies, what happens when you spend almost two entire days doing almost nothing but hunting whiskey? What do you get? And will it rival someone who just was willing to pay a little bit more and spend only 15 minutes hunting? Let's find out. I'm your drinking buddy. All right, drinking buddies. So I did a bunch of raffle drawing type drops with a lot of whiskey, but they involved waiting in long lines. Um, and I then I went up to Phoenix, did a couple more of those. But before I did those, I met up with Brooks and we went to him some of his spots. So I'm gonna go through my bottle haul. We'll talk about his bottle haul, how much I paid for mine, how much he paid for his, and was my time worth it? So day one, I went to a Fry's here in town, which is a grocery store owned by Kroger. And oh, before we get started, this is the Shin. It's a 15 year old Japanese single malt uh, finished in Mazanura. And it's, uh, it's feeling, it tastes a little hot for 98 proof. Um, <clears throat> super malt forward, but the finish is, is so spicy and kind of hot that I would, it almost feels like it's got some rye going on. Obviously it isn't, it's a single malt, but I kind of, I'm kind of enjoying it. It's uh, it's kind of hitting the spot because it is a little hot. And you guys know I like the proof, so. All right, <clears throat> so first day, I waited in line for close to eight hours to get a couple bottles and to fill out a raffle ticket for a potential to win Buffalo Trakes Antiques Collection or a Happy Van Winkle bottle, one of the ones in there. Um, and so my first round through um, I was about s between 60 and 70 in line. And so therefore, Weller CYPB is gone, Weller Single Barrel is gone, um, the uh, E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof is gone, uh, but I get up there and they still have E.H. Taylor Single Barrels and they still have Weller Full Proof. So I grabbed the Weller Full Proof. Um, and then when I was walking up to the registers, they also had Whiten's Minis, so I picked that up. So I am at $60 here. $60 spend. Um, when I got outside, the line was not too long, so I got in the line again. Actually, the line was really long the second time. It was ridiculously long. I was on the other, completely the other side of the building when I got in line the second time. And I kind of accepted the fact that I might not get anything on that second round pass, but I got up there and they still had koshers. So I was able to grab a Buffalo Trace straight rye kosher. I love these. This is a great bottle. I was really excited to still be able to grab this. Grabbed another Blanton's Mini. All right, drinking buddies. So we are out bottle hunting. Uh, there are two Pappy Raffles in Phoenix. So I drove all the way up here for that, but there was also a grand opening of a Costco. So I'm here at Costco. I'm gonna see if there's anything left. It sounds like people have been camping out since last night. So I don't think there's gonna be anything left, but uh, yeah, let's check it out. So they had a grand opening for a new Costco and they had a bunch of different bottles. Um, by the time I got there, they'd been open for about 30 minutes. Most of the bottles were gone, but they still had some really cool stuff left. They still had Remus Repeal Reserve. They still had Booker's and uh, I was able to grab a Old Forester Barrel Proof and it was only 50 bucks. Um, and it's 124.9 uh, proof. Really excited for this guy. I went, then went to uh, Total Wine because it was right next door. Total Wine had a um, Weller Special Reserve and some Hancock, but I don't really need to restock those bottles. So I just left there empty handed. And then when I was getting back on the highway, just like five minutes from the other Costco, there was another Costco. So I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna chance it. I'm gonna see if there's any way they got anything there. I went inside and they didn't have anything. But then I met Brooks for lunch and we grabbed uh, lunch at a great place called Pitch. Food was really nice um, and uh, their barrel picks. They have so many barrel picks. So if you're in the Arizona area, you want to check out a good place for food. I would definitely recommend checking out Pitch because especially if you're a bourbon drinker, man, they had so many store picks. So many store picks um, and they were very eager to let you try them they had lots of options where you could try them 
Uh, Brooks and I both left empty handed there purely because we had some other stops we wanted to make. Next, we went to Travers and Brooks brought a couple bottles there. He picked a Journeyman Silver Cross and he picked up, um, oh, a Wilderness Trail eight year uh, bottle and bond uh, high rye mash bill uh, Wilderness Trail. And um, those two bottles together were about $130. So he's definitely still behind me on these. I'm at 160 here so far. After we went to Travers, we went to a place called Liquor Express. Uh, they do have a lot of overpriced bottles there. Um, but man, if you're looking for something and you don't want to spend hours and hours and hours hunting for it, I kind of get it. So they had some Master's Keep bottles. They have both of these and they were $350 each, um, which sounds like a lot, but they're normally two, over $200 each. They're normally like $250 each. So you, bottles that you can't get anymore, you'll never see again. It's really not out of the realm of possibility to pay a little bit more. Um, they had not pre for $299.99. Um, they had a uh, Michter's uh, Barrel Proof Rye for $150. Really not that bad of a price. Um, you know, honestly, they were overpriced on some things, but then they had a lot of Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs and they were just at retail. They were $80. Bucks. Um, and they had a um, Emerald Giant, uh, Emerald Giant by Redwood Empire, the cask strength version. And Brooks picked up that and an Elijah Craig. And he paid, and then he happened to notice something sitting up on the shelf. He noticed a Parker's Heritage that was marked at, at uh, $700. And uh, it's the new Parker's Heritage. And he was able to talk the guy down to get a decent deal on it. And he paid, um, he paid uh, $500 for it, um, plus tax. So he got the uh, Parker's Heritage and those two other bottles. So he's at five bottles right now and he has spent between $780 and $800, somewhere in there. And he has spent a grand total of 15 minutes hunting today and spent no time hunting yesterday. And I am up to like 10 hours hunting and three hours driving at this point. So yes, I paid retail for my bottles, but at a certain point, maybe your time is more worth it. And if there's a bottle that you really want, sometimes it pays to overpay. All right, so uh, that was his haul. His haul is complete, but I got a few more bottles. So next I went to the next Fry's event. I got there two hours before it started and I was about 80th in line. Um, I grabbed an Elmer T. Lee, it was $40. And just for fun, grabbed another Blanton's Mini for 10. Now I filled out a raffle ticket and uh, I got in my car and I'm gonna ride, drive to the other Fry's raffle event. My GPS said it would take me an hour and 20 minutes and the raffle ended in, in an hour and 25 minutes. So I booked it, I made it barely. I had four minutes to spare when I put my name down on that raffle ticket. Drove out of the parking lot. I knew I had to get food before I headed home. So I drove through a Taco Bell drive through I'm eating a couple burritos and I get the call. I won a bottle. They call me and they say, you won a 12 year. Now, if you guys don't know, the Van Winkle 12 year is called Lot B and it is basically just Weller 12. Um, it is slightly higher proof. Weller 12 is 90 proof. Lot B is 90.4 proof. And it was the bottle that I was the least excited for out of the whole lot. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. I'm just letting you know that if I had to list them all from favorite to least favorite, the lot B is gonna be at the bottom. But I was still excited. I ran my butt over there. I got my bottle, paid $96 for it with tax. And there's a guy there who um, got a Handy, a Thomas Handy. And he goes, yeah, I got the, the Thomas Handy from the, the antique collection and I'm not really a rye guy. And I go, Straight up trade, you in? He goes, yes. So I traded that lot B for a Thomas Handy. Now, 
this bottle was higher retail cost, so I did save some money on that. Um, I'm gonna drink it anyway. You know, some people might say, oh, well, the, the lot B is harder to find and the lot B has a higher secondary cost and things like that. I don't care about that. I wanna drink the juice that I wanna drink, and this is one of the best whiskeys I've ever tasted. I am super excited for this one. So I landed a unicorn. I finally own a bottle of BTAC drinking buddies. I am really excited for that. So my unicorn bottle was Thomas Handy. Brooks's re um, unicorn bottle was the um, was the Parker's Heritage, and I got these bottles for a grand total of. It's all said and done. I spent three hundred dollars for the bottles on this table. Some of you guys in the comments might think I'm crazy to spend that kind of money on whiskey in two days. But the truth is, in Tucson and in Arizona, especially. I go through dry spells where I can't buy anything for weeks on end. There's just nothing available. So if I can get a haul like this, this will hold me off for a long time and I won't be spending anything over the next few weeks. But uh, I spent $300 and I spent like 18 hours uh, hunting and you know, between driving, like five of the hours of that is, is driving. Uh, I put, you know, hundreds of miles on my car and uh, you know, Brooke spent 15 minutes hunting. He spent $700 on his bottles. Uh, did he win? So the question is, drinking buddies, is time more valuable than money? Did I win in my haul or did he win in his haul without spending any time waiting in lines? Drinking buddies, is this my best haul ever? Who won between me and Brooks? And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.